Hello everyone and welcome back to the Project Feline Devlog series, a series documenting the development of my dream game from start to finish. My name is Raymond and I've been working independently in my spare hours for the past seven or eight months to make this dream a reality. For those who have been following the journey thus far, you would have seen me go through the process of designing a character and designing a unique set of mechanics for the character to use. And what I'd like to focus on this episode is transforming a set of mechanics into a complete gameplay experience. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to start us off, I'd like to bring up a common mistake that I tend to make in prototyping. And that is, it's often really easy to get fixated on the mechanics. A game, however, is more than just a set of moves. And I think we can all agree that by definition, a game needs to be a challenge. It needs to have a start, an end, and a way to win and a way to lose. I know this may not apply to every game out there, but I think those are the most common fundamental building blocks to build an engaging experience. So in the current state of my prototype, I think I've put a fair amount of time into establishing a fun set of mechanics to use, such as the wall riding, the sliding, the stomping, and the jumping. While I think that's going well, it did occur to me that something was just missing from this game, and that was that there was nothing really for the player to do. From the feedback I've gotten from you guys so far, it seems that a lot of you are really enjoying the experience of using those mechanics, which is really great. However, I doubt any of you would have played for over two or three minutes. And I think a solution to get people to play the game for longer than a couple minutes at a time is to give them something to do. Or in other words, giving them some kind of challenge to try and beat. So my goal for this month was to make my prototype less like a parkour sandbox and more like a game. Lately, I've been feeling really nostalgic and I've been taking some gameplay inspiration from some of my favorite childhood 3D platformers like Sonic the Hedgehog, Ratchet and & Clank, and LEGO Star Wars. One thing I came to notice was that making an objective or a challenge for your game doesn't need to be complicated at all. The objective for Sonic, for example, is really simple. Get from point A to point B as fast as possible. And this has been the formula for every Sonic game for the past 28 years. And while the series has had its up and downs, it still has some sort of relevancy in gaming culture. And I think there's at least a few niches around the corners of the internet that were really fond of the Sonic experience, like myself. So I decided to build the challenge for my game around the same formula. Start at point A, get to point B. It may seem primitive, but I think many games have successfully crafted an engaging experience with even the simplest of objectives. So in this new version of my prototype, I now have a goal object that the player has to get to using the wall ride. I'd also like to take a moment to note my shift in inspiration for the game. For those that joined very early in the project, you would have noted that I used a lot of first-person and third-person shooters as initial inspiration. You may start to wonder if perhaps that has changed, seeing as I'm taking more of an inspiration from some of the old childhood platformers I used to play. And to that, I would say that when I started this project, I never quite knew how it was going to end up. And I think that's a really fun thing to figure out. And as you've all seen over the past few months, the experience has been slowly evolving. And I feel like as a designer, I've been able to better refine the vision and the experience that I want to deliver. So does this mean that things like weapons or anything from the shooters I was inspired by will no longer be in the game? Well, not necessarily. If I can find a place to fit them in, in the current vision I have, then I'd be more than happy to put them in. And some of the suggestions you guys have been leaving in the comments have been immensely helpful to help me discover that. I'll talk a bit more about mechanics later on. For now, let's move on to the next set of changes that I've made to the gameplay. So, after testing the game with a simple goal in mind, I still felt that there was room to add some sort of aesthetic touch. With the Sonic games I used to play, there was a particular element that kept me coming back to the games, even years after completing them. And that element, I believe, is the score and rank systems. For me, working to earn an S rank was really satisfying. And being able to S rank all of the levels in the Sonic game made me feel like I had really mastered the game. This system alone, I feel, added tons of replay value and led to me replaying the same levels over and over and over for years and years and years just to have the satisfaction of S-ranking all stages. And as the Sonic franchise evolved, they embellished this sensation by adding other things to collect and earn, 
like emblems from Sonic Adventure, the Soliana medals from Sonic 06, the Sun and Moon medals from Sonic Unleashed, and the Red Star rings from Sonic Colors, which have gone on to appear in every mainstream Sonic title since. After replaying a few of these games to re-experience that feeling, I decided that this was something I wanted to have in my game. And to better deliver on that aesthetic of challenge and mastery, I decided to add a score and rank system to my prototype. I also thought it'd be fun to add in some collectible items around the map, and I believe this would make for a fun way to challenge the player's proficiency with the movement and wall ride mechanics. So now, when you reach the end of a level, your total score will be calculated and a rank will be granted based on your score. Players can earn points by collecting the new collectibles placed throughout the level. The game will also keep track of how long you've been playing to determine how fast you can finish the level. To calculate your total score, the game takes your score attained through collecting items and adds a time bonus amount depending on how long you took to complete the level. A shorter time will result in a higher time bonus. After adding those two scores together, the game displays your total score and a rank. Players who finish levels quickly while collecting more items will be granted a higher rank. The minute I implemented this, I found it really hard to put the game down. So I hope you guys enjoy navigating and collecting the items in this new version of the game. And if you achieve the S rank high score, let me know in the comments. So I've now added in a win state to the game, but I have yet to talk about the alternative. How do you lose the game? I think this was a very important thing to add, as I don't think a game without losing can be considered a challenge. So that was another area I wanted to develop for this prototype. Ultimately, I built in a lose condition by giving the player the option to fail. The player can now die and has a limited number of lives. If you lose all of your lives, the game is over and you'll have to try the level from the beginning. To do this, I started by putting in some dangerous spots in the level, allowing the player to be able to fall to their death. When the player dies, they'll respawn at either the start of the level or at one of the newly developed checkpoints placed throughout the level. And the player can activate these checkpoints by running through the lit area surrounding the checkpoint markers, kind of like crossing a mini finish line. Upon contact, the light will change color and play a sound to indicate it's been activated. Checkpoints will also keep track of what time you pass them at and how much points and collectibles you had when touching it. So I've placed a few of these around the new test map and while developing these level mechanics, I thought it might be fun to add these little jump pads placed throughout the levels. If you touch one, you'll get launched high into the air. Nothing too complicated, but I just thought I'd try it out and see how it feels. In addition to the levels, I've also made another new test level. This one's a bit more like a playground in compared to the previous one, just as an opportunity for players to try out the mechanics. I've implemented all of these new features in a new version of the game. Be sure to give it a try and let me know your thoughts in the comments. You can download the latest version in the link in the description. And if you use Linux, then you are in luck as I now have a new Linux version of the game alongside the Windows version in that link. So that'll just about wrap it up for this month's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. It was really fun to develop these gameplay systems and I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. This month I'd also like to thank these amazing artists for their wonderful Project Feline fan art. I really appreciate the time these guys took to draw these pieces and it made me really happy to see. So if you love drawing and would like to see your art featured in these videos, be sure to join the community discord linked in the description and share your fan art with the world. If you'd like to see more content like this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next episode. If you'd like to see more frequent updates on the game, be sure to follow my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages. And of course, I'd like to take a moment to thank my top tier Patreons for supporting the production of these episodes. If you'd like to show your support and see more videos like this, consider becoming a Patreon. There's some Discord rewards in it for you as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.